Carter was always a nervous little kid and always scared. I mean, he would never sleep at night. He'd always sneak into our rooms, you know, want to, want to sleep with mom and dad, whatever. Anyway, we had the house remodeled one time and he picks up a cigarette and touches it to his lips and he comes in, you know, freaking out, crying. He's going to get cancer. Well, the crazy thing about Carter is once he was diagnosed with that thing that scared him more than anything in the world when he was four, he turned into the funniest, biggest, smart ass you'd ever meet. He just, it's like, okay, well, nothing else can really get me. So, and then he just, he was so witty and so funny and he'd light up a room, you know, even though he might not have been feeling the best. Full of life, full of energy. He loved hanging out with his family and friends. He was a blast. The thing about the city of Marshall that makes it special to me and my family is how it was such a community for us when Carter was sick and after he passed away. I mean, I think every business in town had Carter Strong up on their sign for a week or two after he passed away. So it was just very supportive, you know, and it's small enough you, you feel like you know everybody. The reason we wanted to get a court in this town is because Carter loved playing basketball. He played for the different school team and the town teams and a couple of traveling teams where we'd go to the AAU tournaments. And the game when he was playing between chemo rounds and he hadn't played in a year and a half and he's never taken his hat off. I mean, he wore the Duke hat every day for a year and a half. When it was time to play ball, well, I'm bald, but I gotta play. I actually thought he might play with the hat on, but no, he kicked it off and went in and played. And I think it was the first time and the only time a lot of people saw him bald. He went in and, and uh, he made two out of three three-pointers without practicing or running or, or even hardly shooting much. One kid goes in for a shot and, and doesn't go in and his teammate Nick Macchio gets, gets the ball and rebounds it and kicks it out to the three-point line. Not going right back up with the layup, but let's get it, let's get it to the kid that never gets to play and let him knock down another three. So it was, it's pretty awesome how the whole team and, and the coaches and everything were just really there to let him enjoy a couple of games while he could. When he was kind of between treatments, um, like a month or two before he passed away, uh, he was outside shooting hoops and I was out there in the driveway playing basketball with him. And it was kind of cold and getting dark out. So I went inside, I'm hanging out, talking to my wife, I'm like, I'm cold, I'm tired, and this kid is just boundless energy because he hasn't had chemo in four weeks and he finally feels good. So I said, you know, I, I gotta go back outside and shoot hoops with the kid. I gotta. And it's cold and dark and yep, I went outside anyway. So it's just a, a bonding thing and I'm really glad I forced myself to go back outside, you know, knowing what we know now. But just growing up playing sports outside and playing basketball outside and knowing how much Carter loved it and having this with the sign and the court kind of dedicated to Carter. It's just a big memorial and a big thank you to the city for everything they've done. When Carter passed away, you know, with the community, there was always a, a huge outpouring of support. But somebody set up a local, you know, drop off your funds at the local bank in town. We can do whatever we want with it. Well, we thought, you know, there's five, six thousand dollars in that account after he was gone. It just seems like we should do something and give back to the community. We wanted to do something to honor Carter and remember him forever. So we did a endowed scholarship at the school. Uh, they, they give a scholarship to an athlete who's had a cancer type situation go on in their family, whether it's immediate family or so someone who's dealt with things like that. So yeah, we just kept going and we thought, well, let's try to get an outdoor basketball court. And Carter would like this better. <laughs> and then this uh, spring, Preston Stensrud at the City of Marshall said, hey, we could apply to the Timberwolves and possibly get picked for this court. So we did. We got a lot of support from the community and we were telling everybody, vote on your phone, vote on your home computer, vote on your work computer. And then a couple of big industries in town, I know the Schwann's Food Company had all their employees voting every day in town. They'd send out an email. And U.S. Bank, who's part sponsor, has a big uh, leasing division out in Marshall, Minnesota. So they had all their employees voting. So I mean, it's pretty cool when you know a couple of the largest employers in town are telling their employees, you need to take five minutes, go on the website and vote. That also falls back on part of the community support that we received is everybody voted on every electronic device they had for, for a month straight. But you know, the day it was announced that we, that we finally won it, wow, I can't believe it. You know, it's really gonna happen. 
and now that we see it, it's like, wow, it, yeah, it really happened. So, it, yeah, it's incredible. This started as people set up a fund down at the bank when Carter passed away to help the family out with things, and it was overwhelming how much money it was. So we decided to do a little bit of fundraising and present it back. And, and we kind of had a little seed money to get this going, but uh, huge thanks to the Timberwolves and U.S. Bank for picking up the big portion of the check. You know, people feel uncomfortable talking about someone who passed away. Well, you know, all of Carter's family, we all encourage everybody to talk about him all the time. You know, I love this. I love talking about Carter. The one thing about this living on forever and, and having that sign, you know, whenever kids are talking about where they're going to go play basketball, they're going to go play basketball at Carter's court and give them a reason to talk about him and next generation will ask, well, who's this Carter kid? You know, why has he got this big basketball court named after him? And they can say, you know, he's a kid that young kid that died at 14 when he had cancer, but he lived his life and he was as happy as anybody could be given his situation.